I put out a mixtape called Ghost, and then like everybody started fucking with that. I I've I've been had motion on SoundCloud though, like on mm. some cool like some slice, but then like more like people in the area started fucking with me like 2020, and then like that's when Brent started fucking with me too, and that kind of brought on a whole new wave of like new fans and shit from and specifically catered to the DMV because we both from we both from Maryland. So. You good right yeah, there? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Nah, um, <clears throat> uh, we got a late call. You got the show tonight? Yeah, I got a show tonight. Yeah. How, like, how was the road, man? What's, what's popping? Like, road. talk to me. So, um, I just got off tour with, you know, Lancey Foe? Lancey Foe? Bro, come on. You can't yeah. ask me this type of shit on camera, bro. Come on, man. You can't ask me that on camera because if I don't know, niggas be like, this nigga don't know. Oh. I mean, I don't know. Uh, nah, right. you good. You good. I'm fucking with you, bro. Yeah, come on. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, so, I just got off tour with, um, Lancey Foe, mm -hmm. he's uh yeah he 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 a cool ass. Nigga. I'm glad I got to go on a tour because it taught me like um it taught me how to perform more and shit like that and it was like it was an experience because I ain't never been on tour before that and my being with him on the road for like two weeks or three weeks or whatever the fuck it was uh it was job fun. I learned how to get more comfortable with the crowd. It prepped me up for this tour, the tour I'm on now. It's like I'm more like eased into it and shit. Like I feel like I could like I'm setting the foundation for like my live show and just like getting into a spot where I could get that shit better. But yeah, yeah. Lancey Lancey's tour taught me a lot for real. I'm glad that I got the uh I got to go on that. But yeah, tour life, bro, that's really it, bro. It's like you wake up, go to the show. Or wake up, go to the hotel, um, do the show, go back home, chill for a few days. You fly back out, go to the hotel, do another show, go back home for a few days. Or if you have a back-to-back -back show, you it's just like it's, less, it's just like a lot of hotel rooms and like B and Bs and shit like that. Go to the studio at night, like a lot of moving around, yeah, a lot of just, moving pieces. Yeah, just moving, bro. Yo, seven is the. I know he moved the mic up. Is it in his face now? Is that shit like? All right, bad, 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 bad. Man, let's get it started. You ready to get the interview started? Yeah, let's go. What's popping, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Oh, man. Another special one. Y'all know how I feel when I go home. When I'm in Atlanta, listen, let me talk to you guys the right way. Make sure you check out the audio right now. Go go on um, wherever they got podcast audio. Get that right now. When I go home, you know I'm in Atlanta. So, you know, if I was home, I wouldn't really call this home because you know how we do in Baltimore. We just like a little city on our own. That, that rhyme, I might have to be a rapper now, but whatever. But when I'm in Atlanta, we together. So when I go back home, I mean a DMV period, right? So if you're from Baltimore, don't judge me because like it's different. When you move out, you got to embrace everybody. It's shit different when you, when, you, when you out your city. I go back home, man. It's special. I got a, uh, this artist right here. I mean, he's been getting a lot of motion. Um, especially recently, you know, on a project with Brent Fayez, the, uh, the, the, the toxic king himself, you get what I'm saying? Like he's making a lot of moves, doing a lot of shows. I done seen him doing interviews in New York. I think even LA, man, he making a lot of moves, man. Uh, my guy Junie is in the building. What up, dog? Yeah. How you feeling, man? What's up, bro? How are you? I'm all right. I can't complain, man. Cooling, bro. Bro, talk to me, dog, because I see you covered up and shit. Yeah, Did, was you get upset? this my face. Was, was you upset? upset when you came to the A and you found out it was hot in this motherfucker? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't wear a lot of things that don't have a hood. Mm. Yeah, I like having a hood. I always wear a hat. I just like, you know, what I'm saying, I like. I feel like the more layers you got, the more you can get swagged up. Mm. So sometimes I just like it. Okay. What's it? What's the nigga? What does nigga baby say? It's the middle of the summer. I got a hoodie on. Yeah. See, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. Cause I was. And I know these nigga mad at fuck. What she say? She said. Um. She said. Uh, I keep telling him stop asking me questions on camera, bro. Cause I don't know. Like he gonna make me look. It's bad. a BK to ruler line. It's a BK to ruler line where she talking about wearing wearing a uh, a sweater in the summer just okay. for the swag. So you just like I just don't care. Like, I don't even get that hot to be honest, bro. Okay. So you just like layers as as swag you part of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now nah, I fuck with Unless that. Unless you running around. Unless I'm running around ankle. 
burn up unless it's hot as shit. Okay. And you just have no choice, and you're gonna look stupid. If you it wasn't hot as shit today for you though. I was in the, I was in the hotel the whole time. Oh, you was in the AC. I was in the AC. You was vibing. went to the sound check. Came here. I ain't had to post up outside on the block, and you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I was cooling. When the last time you been outside on the block? Mm, outside on the block. That's ever been your thing. Where you from? Like Montgomery County, or I'm from Silver Spring. Silver Spring. Yeah, yeah. Silver Spring. It's a cool place, bro. Was I on the block in Silver Spring? Was you no, I was, no? Not, you I never, was not. Never, never, never. I was not on the block. I was outside. I, I was not posted on the block though. Yeah, I never was a block type of guy myself. Yeah, niggas I hated me. The block is for niggas who make money on the block. Yeah, like my friends hated me. They always want me to be on the block. Nah, bro, I got shit to do. Like I ain't trying to be on the block with you, man. Yeah. I'm not trying to be on the corner with you and shit. Yeah, it ain't shit to do but get shot right there, bro. No cap. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, when did all this this motion start happening for you? As far as doing the music, man. I seen your interview with uh, Nala and shit. And you were saying, like, you've yeah. been getting a lot of love in the DMV now. Yeah, now the coolest shit. I started getting love, like, two years ago. Like, I put out a mixtape called Ghost, and then, like, everybody started fucking with that. I, I've, I've been had motion on SoundCloud, though, like, on mm. some cool, like, some slight shit. But then, like, more, like, people in the area started fucking with me, like, 2020. And then, like, that's when Brent started fucking with me, too, and that kind of brought on a whole new wave of, like, new fans and shit from, and specifically cater to the DMV because we both from we both from Maryland so it's like yeah but around that time 2020 was okay. when shit started picking up what was that like coming out of the pandemic well that still was like mid pandemic that was like mid pandemic or like it was like yeah like towards that yeah that was mid pandemic actually yo making music in um the DMV right yeah the type of style of music you make, I feel like it's not. I wouldn't say it's gangster. What about you? I, w- I don't want to just. It's not. I wouldn't say it's gangster. It's just like you know. You could say it's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's not really. Like I make music more for like. Like the, I make music like for people to have a feeling of like, like I like the unorthodox of shit in my shit. So that's why I might fuck around and like, rap on like a cool chill ass. Some different groovy ass, some 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 just some trill shit, but I rap about like some groovy. some street shit. I like that or some though. real shit or just some like some young nigga shit. Like you know what I'm saying? Like rap about like you know rap about like lean on the Silk Sonic type beat because okay. that's just that's my type of you know what I'm saying. That's we just we real. keeping it real and it's like nigga we. We we musically inclined too, yeah. and we really just that. You know, Yo, what I'm how how is it trying to find your uh your lane kind of sort of coming out of the DMV when it's so many like just hardcore like hood rappers and shit like that. And you got something so different. Was that hard trying to find your lane or find an audience for that? No, it wasn't fine trying to find. A, I mean, it wasn't hard trying to find an audience for that because. I was the only nigga doing that, so I was making my own audience. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because back home, it's like nobody, it's only a few niggas who's not doing, like, street shit. Yeah. That, like, people have respect for or is is even good enough for people to respect. Acknowledge. For real. Unless it's, like, a girl who makes R&B or a nigga that makes R&B, but, like, a rapper that's not street from like where I'm from. Like maybe. Yeah, like, okay. you know, everybody going, that's cool. But, like, niggas, nobody in my lane was, like, just, like, cool enough to, like, make good-ass music and still just just be, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm cool with everybody, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm cool with everybody in the DMV. Like, so in sh- terms of, I ain't going to say everybody, but every type of person in the DMV. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. I don't post on the block because I don't want to get shot, but I could go post on the block and smoke, and I could be cool with everybody, nigga, in, in everybody's hood, bro. But, like, because niggas know me as, like, the rapper, bro. Like, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm, like, the, I'm, like, I'm cool with every demographic of, of of people where I'm from. Like, I could go cool it with the niggas who make fucking... I could cool it with a nigga who has, like, a jazz band, and I could go cool it on the block, and then I could go cool it with this R&B singer, and I could go cool it with uh, the skaters, and I could go cool it with everybody, because it's like, that's what I tried to curate back home, mm. with just me being me. 
So like, so, was it hard to find an audience? No, it wasn't hard to find an audience. So prior to 2020, it was like, you never got like frustrated seeing niggas flourish and you just like barely making it, I guess. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. Because you said 2020 was when I got frustrated, but like later on, I realized that like I wasn't that good back then. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like 2020 is probably when I started getting good enough for people to be like, yeah. I didn't, I didn't think that then. I always thought I was good as shit. But looking back, I'm like, yeah, this wasn't going. Damn. I didn't get good until, like, 2020 for real. What you think the major change was? Like, if you had to pinpoint, like, oh, okay, I wasn't doing that. What was I that? got my own studio. I got my own studio. I I had, like, a student refund check with my college. And I bought a, I bought a MacBook, and I bought a mic, and I bought an interface. And I started cooking up on my own. Once I started cooking up on my own, recording everything, mixing everything, that's when, like, yeah, like, nigga, I turned up. Like, turned I turned up. up. I started, ex- like, creating more, getting more out of the box. Niggas was like, oh, yeah, this shit hard. And then, like, that was, like, 2018. So, like, two years later, I did that shit for two years straight. And by that time, two years of just playing on the laptop every day, you going to get good as shit. Let me ask so. you this, then. <clears throat> when you um catch yourself doing your own thing in your studio, because you seem laid back, how do you like the... The environment of the studio. Do you like being in there by yourself, making your music in your own zen, or you like a lot of people in the whole whole vibe situation? Um, kind of like being nowadays. Oh shit, nowadays I like. I don't know what hold you. I like fucking with it, like Dolo, not mm. Dolo, but like a few people, like two people. I used mm. to not care. Like three, three, four months ago, you probably could have told me like you probably you probably could have asked me that question. And I would have been like, I don't care. It could be a party in there. But like now, I just want like, I don't even like do. I don't like doing shit with people no more, bro. Damn. Why? Why? Why you don't? Why you don't like fucking with people no more? Nah, nah. I fuck with people. Well, like why? Why? It's you just in that like space when now? I'm. It makes me more comfortable now, bro. Mm. Yeah, it makes me more comfortable. Yeah, you got. I just feel like everybody just be. Yeah. yeah. Probably gotta think too much. Wanna, yeah, like, bro. What the fuck you want? What you I'm want? Trying to like, yeah. Nah, I feel it's like, not even that. It's not even that. It's that. I'm trying to focus harder on me right now, and trying to do that is hard to do that with everybody around. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Well, you get when you when you get to when did you arrive there? Cause that ain't no easy shit to be focused on. Like I'm trying to focus on me. A lot of people can't even do that. When did you arrive at that destination or that point? Man, just like really a while ago, probably like two, three years ago, bro. But like I'm just now like trying to do that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Took two years of, like, not even, like, really, like, two years of wanting to do something but not doing something. So, like, you just got to do something. What you what, what had you, like, in limbo? Was it a girl? What was it, like, nah, some family bro, shit? It was just, like, shit that you can't, like, shit that you just can't shake until you just need, like, you need, like, outside help. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like what? Bro, like, it's just a lot of just personal shit like you need you need to grow from that it's it's not shit shit won't sh- your life can't can't continue in ways that you want it to if you don't like let go of you know what i'm saying mm. i mean i know what you're saying i just don't know what so what yeah. we're gonna leave that there i feel you probably don't want to talk about that shit um it was interesting to me because i'm not an artist but i heard one of my artist friends talking about this i was curious so brent fires has you on his album on the track uh f y what is it f y t b f y t b i noticed that when i type in your name that comes up first yeah right because i'm assuming that's probably like the most popular song mm-hmm. right yeah when what's better 
if you get a feature with Brent Fayez or Brent Fayez get a feature with you and put your name on the track, like what's, what, what would be better for an art, artist trying to gain an audience? If it was, wait, say it again, say the question. Again. So right. how it is now, Brent Fayez featuring Junie, yeah. right? Or would it be better as Junie featuring Brent Fayez as far as trying to gain an um, audience for artists? Um, that's a good question. Cause like some people would say I'd rather be on somebody's album. Some people would rather say I would want him on my album. That's that's kind of the question. You're asking, yeah, right? just curious. Uh, personally, I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah I really don't know. That's like either one would be cool with me. I mean, it, I'm glad it, it should happen the way it did. So I mean, I guess I'll say the album. You know. What I'm okay. Saying? Does but, that hold more weight? Anybody know? I, I'm curious. No, nobody. Does it? If if like you're on theirs, okay. I, I assume, but I didn't know because if they're on yours, I'm like if they search their name, it probably would still pop up, but not as far up. I'm assuming. I I okay okay okay. Damn. So if you hypothetically, do you think artists should instead of paying to have people on as features for them, how much do you think it would cost to pay? A Brent Fayez to be a feature on his album like that. You probably couldn't even pay for that shit if you had to think about it. How much would it be? Like, yeah, not a really not a real number, but like, yeah, this shit, probably a lot. He probably he does he don't do no features. Damn. So that's a market. I'm asking because like for the artists that might be watching, that probably could be a marketing tactic. So instead of like saving your money to get a big feature, yeah, see if you probably can double that right and see if you can get a feature with them. So if they post it to their distribution, yeah. your name pop up and you get more. Yeah, bro. Damn, that's crazy. How, what was the um? Did you see the the amount and people that came and subscribed to you after that that feature? Um, subscribed to me or like, I don't know, just like Kate, just yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know the metrics, but like, uh, was it was it a good amount of people. I gained like a good amount of followers from it. Not yeah. like. Not anything like too crazy, but like it was definitely you know the core fans who enjoy him and what he his taste and what he does they they came through. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Everybody who listened to the track didn't come through. You know, didn't come through and follow me. That's not really how it works, but you know, definitely a good amount of people. But not even great. on Instagram. Just pull it, bro. Just pull it. But not even on Instagram. But I'm t I'm, I'm talking about like far as streaming platforms though. Like far, yeah, like far as um, iTunes and shit like that. Yeah, just pull it, just pull it. Yeah, I don't know, go. actually. I really, I don't know. You could probably like find out though. You mm. could probably, like, I have screenshots of like, like every month I screenshot my, my like Spotify or my YouTube or my something just to check the growth. So I could probably, I could probably see. For you just think, okay. Yeah, Damn. but it's probably wasn't wasn't crazy. I didn't gain like a million monthly listeners, you know Damn. what I'm saying? But it it's wasn't like, crazy. I would have assumed it'd be crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's like at the end of the day, like it's like I'm just glad that I was like just a part of that shit. Like that was that was fire. Like, Hell yeah! <laughs> and plus, like it, you know what I'm saying? Like we made a fire song. Like you definitely held your own. Like, like you, you know definitely, yeah. You feel me? Like fire, it sound good. I ain't gonna lie. I just got hip to you. That shit was good. Yeah. I'm not even gonna lie. I fuck with the. Uh, it's another song you did with uh, I don't, like Cake and I don't have no idea. Like the shit was hard. I'm like, damn. Um, I don't know if it was Milan. I don't know. It was uh, shit was hard. Um, I'll tell you if I see it. Let's see. This shit was. You was in your bag on this shit. I think it was. Yeah, Milan remix. Am I saying it right? Milan remix. Yeah. Oh yeah, what that about, shit was hard. Yeah, I oh, appreciate that. It. Shit was a vibe. Yeah. That shit was a vibe. You fuck with um, Can Can? I, I don't, bro. I you that's a third. I tell this man stop asking me questions. You making no, me look crazy. Milan, <laughs> Milan remix is this on Can Can's. But album. that's what I'm saying. I didn't know, bro. I just got hip today for the okay. audience, for okay. his audience, so y'all won't kill me. I literally yeah. just got hip today. This was last minute. You get what I'm saying? So I'm trying to do all the research that I can. So that's I so happen to come across this song with what's his, what's the name? Can 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 can, and this shit was hard. So for me, I'm like, damn, this shit. That that was a song that popped out to me. I think you definitely did your thing on that too. So this this, this um this tour you on, are you like talk to me about? Is it like a a headline? How, how is it? What, what 
what type what type of tour is it? Is it an indie thing or? It's a headlining tour. I'm he- I'm headlining um like four uh four shows. I'm doing uh New York, Atlanta, L.A. and D.C. Damn, it's all ind- independent. Yeah, yeah, it's independent. I mean, as you are, yeah, yeah, it's independent. Damn, I'm not really, you know. How do you put that together? Like, are you looking at the Instagram? Are you looking at the metrics? How how are you putting that together? Um, so my label helps me with it. My managers put it together, and like, I have a whole team of people that you know just do what they got to do to put the right puzzle pieces together and just make it happen. Yeah, they use metrics and stuff. You know, damn, that's hard. That's yeah. how, how does it feel like you know what I'm saying like I know I, I asked you about the tour shit but like being in the space that you're in that you're able to go on a four city tour you yeah. know what I'm saying the headline like what space are you in right now? Um, what space am I in? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm blessed, bro. I'm I'm feeling good, bro. I'm, I'm just feeling like you know want to keep it going, take it to the next level. Mm. It's just it's a lot of shit to you know what I'm saying can. It's a lot of shit to do. Like next time I come to Atlanta, I want to do a bigger venue, and I mm. want to do this, this, that. Like same yeah. thing with any other city. It was you were talking about how um you had did some shit in D.C. I think, and you was like you thought the venue was too big, and it ended up being like packed out. Yeah, yeah, that shit happened. Yeah, that shit was O.C. I thought it was um that's low key what be happening every time though, bro. Now that I think about it, I always think a venue be too big, but then we be we be doing it, we be doing it justice. So yeah, you said. How was that show though? Was yeah, I mean, like just, just, just knowing that, like you can, you. Can, I'm just thinking, like, bro, you got a big venue, right? Yeah. Paint this picture, like, man, we got, we got to get a smaller venue because I, don't, I don't want it to look trash. It's all about the look nowadays, right? Mm-hmm. I don't, it could be a thousand people in there, but if the venue too big, it's gonna look like a nigga spread out. It's gonna just look crazy, right? Yeah. You going through that in your mind, and you get there, it's like this is actually packed. It's like, oh shit. Yeah. Like. That shit gotta feel special, especially coming yeah, from where we come. Definitely feel special, bro. Damn. Cause it's like, it's just like a, it's like a way to just feed the. Uh, it's a way to feed the beast, bro. Just mm. know that you got it, and then it's a way to go go harder. You know what I'm saying? I ask everybody this uh, when they come here. What um, if you had to name the uh, the place you're at in your career now, what would you call it? Hmm. I'm not like there yet. Mm, not I'm there still yet. like you know work in progress. As much as some niggas might want to see it and look at my career and be like, "Oh yeah, if only I could get to where he at." It's people I'm looking at like, man, if only I could get to where he at, and he mm. looking at somebody like, "If only I could get to where he at." So it's like work in progress. You know what I'm saying? We all just work in progress. You know what I'm saying? Future's still that. not probably where he want to be at. It's like yeah, so work in progress. Nah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna call this a uh, chapter for me. Beast mode, like fuck these niggas, like we stepping on niggas next, <laughs> like beast mode, like I'm still working, but beast mode is funny. As fuck shit. these niggas, like that's the vibe I'm coming. You know I feel like that, like man, fuck these niggas, like whoo, it's my time. You know, you never feel like that. Talk, I know you. Yeah. Come on, man, bring I it, like bring I it out. Like you know that. what I'm saying? Talk to me. I just don't be trying. I don't be trying to be. Uh, I be trying to be humble. You be trying to be humble. Yeah. Fuck all that. That's what the name should be. Fuck being humble. <laughs> That's what the name should be. Fuck it's all hard. that. It's hard to stay humble. <laughs> hey, <laughs> remember when, uh, nah, I don't know, fucking Silk Sonic was winning everything at the Grammy. Oh, you want to ask me another question? <laughs> <laughs> I told this nigga. This nigga Anderson Palmer. I'm 0 for 4. It's hard to be humble. <laughs> that shit was funny as shit. This nigga's up right now. He keep asking me, I don't know nothing. Niggas probably listen like, yo, this nigga really don't know shit. <laughs> like, it's cool, bro. Niggas are <laughs> not. keep embarrassing me on this. I'm just bringing it on up. On my just, platform, just that's crazy, story. bro. That's crazy. That's not fair. That's not cool, hey, bro. Man. But nah, man. Yeah. So you... But you don't ever had those moments where it's like, man, I'm really better than most of these niggas out here. Like, fuck these niggas. Mm. Yeah, I be feeling like that all the time. All right, that's good. I just like, want what, nigga? I just want to hear it. I just yeah, want to hear it, bro. I feel like that all the time. You think you be slept on? Yeah. Yeah. But as an artist, you should feel slept on at all. You should be Drake and still feel slept on. Nah, you know what Drake said, bro? And I thought it was... He said two things, right? The first thing he said that made me say, this the type of shit I want to be on. He said, what the fuck? He said, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. He said, if the neighbors complain about the noise, I'll buy the neighbor house. 
I want to be there. The second thing he said most recently was, nigga went and bought a house when he could have bought a verse. Nigga's dumb as fuck. Come on. That's a different level of flat. Like, am I the only one hit like, like that right there? That's what I'm reaching for. That's for like fuck being slept on. I like man, look, you niggas dumb as shit. Mm-hmm. You want to do an interview with who? You niggas dumb. Imagine if I would have did that shit coming up. Like that's the type of vibe I'm on. You yeah. feel me? Like, that's what type of vibe I was trying to be on. Fucking um, yeah, bro. He not. He's trying to be humble. He like man, look, yeah, I'm just chilling, bro. Like you know, like I'm okay. like, cool. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> it's not even the vibe for real. <laughs> I fuck with it, bro. I appreciate. I, I appreciate you pulling up, man. I, um, mm-hmm. you got the show tonight. Where is it? It's at aisle five. Aisle five. I probably yeah, try to pull up. Five. Yeah, pull you up. Tell bro. me come through. Yeah, I'm, I'm fuck with. It. See, for sure. Shit what can man. I expect? You gonna be like, you about to bring like some hoes out? You about to have like a bunch of niggas on the stage? Mm-hmm. How, how, what, what, how your shows be? It's um, it's definitely, it's probably some hoes, but I'll say um, it's probably just gonna be like. It's gonna be people that just it's probably just gonna be fans. It's really gonna be like people there who just wanna hear their favorite song type shit. And then like I don't be on the stage when I'm out of town, I don't be on the stage with too many niggas. Okay. It just be me for real. Okay. When I'm in town if and I have everybody with me, it might be different for real. But when I'm out of town or if I'm torn, it's just me for real. All right. It's man. Definitely some hoes in the crowd, definitely, you know what I'm saying? It's a good show. But, I appreciate you, man. Let niggas know how to follow you and how to support you and everything. Um you can follow me on Instagram at Junior TV, J O O N Y O F T V. That's um, that's on everything actually. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Uh-huh. Junie, yeah. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Um, work in progress. Me, step on you, motherfucking, on next. Next. motherfucking next. We out, man. It's rap. Good hey. shit.